<laughs> Thanks, John, for the USS Enterprise uh, connection there. Yeah, good, good, good. Right, yeah, and the, the, yeah, the use of planes, Penny. That's right. Um, and this was this was very much uh, Second World War. A second question just coming through in the chat for you now as well. Um, I want to see if you can make any connection between uh, kamikaze pilots, um, as they were in the Second World War there, and um, samurai warriors. Um, who or what were samurais? What did they believe in? What was their ethos? Okay, John. Yeah, good. Ah, good there, Oliver. Yeah, that that idea about loyalty being uh, vital within it. Yep, that's good. Um, desperate tactics too. Yeah, pressured. Um, also, um, the samurai. It was a way of life. Uh, it, it, it was. Uh, it was that belief, and they they saw kind of a nobility in death. Um, and that's where the whole thing of seppuku or harikiri comes from, where, where it was a case of they very ceremonially took their own lives. Mm. That was the idea. And these sorts of uh, thoughts begin to permeate the poem itself. Um, and we see that it's this tradition and it's thousands of years old. So again, trying to sort of go against that kind of concept and idea with a very difficult thing to do. Uh, it's, it, it's cultural heritage, that sort of idea. So if we now go on to the shared screen here of the poem itself, what I'd like you to do for me now is just have a read through of the poem from beginning to end there, it just goes on to a couple of pages. Um, as you go along, the usual sorts of things, highlight, annotate anything that sort of leaps out at you, that makes an impact upon you. Um, and then we're going to get your initial reactions from that poem uh, in a few minutes. So it's just 11 o'clock now. So if I give you five minutes just to read through there and jot down your reactions from that, um, and then we'll discuss, OK?
Okay, um, let's begin to get your uh, initial thoughts here. We'll have this bit of a discussion in the room, so I'll sort of ask you questions directly again. And then I'll have some other chat points I want you to do uh, a bit later in the lesson. Um, so, John, if I can come to you first, um, what's your kind of, how, how did you react to this? Uh, it's, it's quite positive. It has all those things, like, which you can just, just tell, for example, like, had enough fuel for one way. Yeah. Because that's what we used to do. They used to strap loads of like bombs to this plane and then they'll just say, if you come back, <laughs> yeah. we'll send you again. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, that is such, isn't it? You know, it is that quite literally. It is this a one way trip. And it's a one way trip to where, John? Yeah. yeah. Well, as they see it, paradise. Yeah. Uh, again, yeah, it's that one way trip. Yeah, it's to death. It's anything but also, for the yeah. emperor. They yeah. These yeah. anything for the emperor. So if it's to die for the emperor, then that's what they'll do. It was really like dramatic and quite extreme. Yeah, v very good. I thought you might kind of uh, enjoy this one and, and, and yeah, I do. Knowing, knowing, knowing your interest, and I thought you'd you'd get a lot of the kind of contextual ideas that are woven yeah. through this. Um, but it's also the same. Yeah, this idea it was like ceremonial honor. Um, yeah, I don't know if any of you have seen the film. You might have seen it, John. Do any of you have seen the film um, Midway, which goes into? Is it, I have seen. It. Yeah, it's I that battle, it. isn't it? It's that battle. It's a really important battle that takes place in yeah, uh, the, the South Pacific there between the Japanese and the Americans. Um, but again, it's really good from that Japanese side to show that because for us it might seem like a very kind of crazy notion. Um, but it, it really taps into that mentality um, that, that this was a great honour to die this way um, yeah. as a kamikaze pilot. Um, and they, people like signed up to be this, you know, and full knowledge of what it would be and what it would lead to. Um, very good. Thanks for that, John. 
Um, moving on, next up, uh, Penny, how did you react to this poem? Um, I don't know, it makes you realise like how much of a sacrifice they're making. Yeah, yeah, good. What sort of sacrifice do you think that they're making here, um, Penny? Yeah, well, I kind of like said, like, because the title is just like one word kamikaze, mm. then like, it's kind of all they're becoming. Yeah. Like, they're getting rid of their personality and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, isn't it? And again, if we think of the way that the word kamikaze, and this is sort of open question to the, the whole class here, if we think of the way that the word kamikaze um, is used in the modern context, what does that tend to suggest? About someone. Any ideas? No? Do, do we not think about maybe is it a bit mad, a bit crazy? You know, if, if they're on a kamikaze mission, it's a mission that's mad. You know, it, it's sort of doomed from the start. Why would you kind of do these sort of things? And so we can see how it's changed, but within its sort of Japanese heritage, it, it has something, it defines something far more powerful and far more significant to them. Um, so yeah, we get that awareness of that sort of um, self-sacrifice and that is going on. Um, good, good, good. Um, bo, bo, bo. So we get that one from join that fuel for one-way mission. Um, okay, thank you. Um, Hugh, how do you react to the poem? What, what, anything leap out at you and that made you react at all? Um, I thought about the one-way journey to history as well. But yeah, I can't really find anything else except yeah. um huge flagged ways first one way, showing like their respect for them when they set off. Maybe. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it is, I mean, it gets all that kind of patriotism sort of thing. Um, but again, as you say, it's a good line. It's a good line to pick out, and it's building on what um. Uh, John had been talking about there, you know, that definition of it, it it's that one way, it's a journey into history. You know, this is, a, isn't it, it's that kind of sense that your name goes down, it will be revered and remembered uh, forever. Excuse my dogs. Archie, behave. Um, so, sorry about that. Yeah, um, so it's that idea about, um, yeah, you're going to be revered, remember, into history. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, Clem, what about you? How did you react to it? Um, it's very emotional. Uh, the content is, isn't it? Good. On the last page mm -hmm. like even though he came back and he's meant to be like this hero in history yeah he never really acknowledged him or appreciated what he did yeah and you know and again as a kind of as a chillingness in that line isn't that you know he came back because claim what's he what's he not meant to do he's not meant to come back exactly i mean imagine that going away and you know again we'll discuss in a little minute you know the, the reasons why he, he does uh, it, it's that idea you know you, you you're just meant to go and you're not meant to come back and so in that line isn't there, that there is that sort of sense of, of disappointment being let down and Clem the fact that he comes back what does that suggest that he's chosen to do? He's like chosen to, I don't know. It's more like he's brought dishonor instead of like. Yeah, and, and that is exactly um, what we're, it, it leads on to. Yeah, but if you think about it, if, if he was if he was true to the kind of ka kamikaze philosophy, the kamikaze mission, you know, and he goes off and, and he just dies, he's literally choosing what? When he goes off in that trip, if he follows it through, Death. apart from honour, what else is he choosing? Death. Death, isn't it? So if he comes back, and he he decides to come back, what has he chosen over death? 
I don't know. Yeah, you do. What's the opposite of death? Oh, life. Yeah, he's literally, hasn't he? He's chosen life over death. And, and we'd think that's a good thing, isn't it? That's surely a, a cause for celebration, but not for him. So good, good, good line to pick out there as well. Really powerful one. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Philippa, how about you? How, what was your reaction to the poem initially? Um, I thought it was like, um, it seemed like he was having lots of second thoughts, like last minute doubts. And mm, yeah. And what is it that makes him have these second thoughts, do you think, Philippa? Um, that he wants to go back to his family. Yeah, isn't it? It's family, isn't it? Yeah, so good family but you've been that sort of a powerful driving force within him. Okay, good. Um, Charlotte, moving on to you now, please. Uh, what's your uh, first take in this poem? Um, it's almost like, not that he's emotionally drained, but his power is kind of like, not not emotional but from an emotional perspective that makes any sense like you know it does i mean and again as as here we can talk about the power of his emotions um whoops i think that that that's that's so important um aspect to this poem too um because we see all these sort of conflicting don't we emotions uh going through them um as he as he kind of sets off uh and then and makes that return journey and then and then the sort of fallout from him coming back uh and so it, it, and again there's i think we've got uh for the reader lots of you know empathy going on here the impact upon us Ooh, missed out the reader uh, and so it can be that kind of sense of an emotionally draining poem Good point to make. Okay, um, moving on to Jess. Jess, how, how, how do you react to this poem? Any thoughts you want to share there, Jess? No? Um, no. No, oh. nothing at all, Jess. No, sorry. <laughs> this poor man's gone off on a plane. At one moment he thinks to certain death and then he thinks, do you know what, I don't want to do this, I'm coming back. Is there any line at all, any image that kind of um, leapt out at your end that you just thought, mm, that's quite interesting, that's quite powerful, or, you know? Uh, okay, we'll see if we can convert you a little bit later on in the, in the lesson then, not to worry. Um, Oliver, are you still with us? Yeah. Hey, right. Okay, Oliver, um, what about you? Um, what did you react to? Um, well, well, I think you've probably said enough, but the first thing I thought was it's very patriotic. And yeah. Then, um, I got this sense of memories and also where it mentions the figure of eight. Mm -hmm. That's probably the thing that stood out to me because I didn't know if I'm thinking about it too much, but I thought it was kind of like um, the infinity symbol. Ooh. So it's like it's just like a constant cycle, like never ending. Do you know what? I like that a lot. That, I, I don't think you thought about that too much. I thought you, I think you kind of thought about that really well there, and that, that's a, that's a really good. Uh, symbolic idea going on there yeah and, and again that sort of constant loop of life and death and yeah and what links them all down through you know history how they connect culturally um no I, I like that a lot that's very good okay um I think that's has been round the room now isn't it right so back 
I'm going to, have, I'm going to put a question back in chat for you now um, that I want you to respond to again, please. OK, so first off, I want you to uh, write down. I want you to write down who you think is the narrator of this poem. You know that in the, in, in the, my last Duchess, we know that the voice is there from the Duke. Um, in Ozymandias, we have the three different voices from the traveller, the person who's lived through Ozymandias' reign and Ozymandias himself. Who do you think is the narrative voice in this poem? Who is retelling it from what point of view? Um, if you want to pop down your answers now for me, please, in the chat. Thank you. Oh, not the grandchild, Clem. Um, I can see maybe why you're thinking that. Not the grandchild. Ah, John, yep, you're coming up with the daughter and Penny as well. Daughter, maybe, yes, isn't it? This is being seen. Oh, Jessica now jumps in. Oh, I see what she's done to you, Clem. She said the daughter, obviously. Ooh. Yeah, everybody piling in now. Yeah, it's the daughter, the daughter, the daughter, isn't it? There's a, there's a slight giveaway, isn't there? Um, and again, it's that section you've been looking at. Um, and I can see where you get the grand. Uh, whoops. I can see maybe we come up with the, the, the thinking about the grand uh, daughter because talking about talking about how he remembered his grandfather's boat, that sort of thing. So we're getting that sort of family heritage, family lineage. Um, but it's, first of all, it, it's the mother doesn't speak to him. Um, you know, it was no longer existed. And then it's we children still chattered and laughed, but then we learned to be silent as well and live through uh, that he'd never returned sort of thing. Okay, so good. So it's a daughter's perspective. Um, My next question to you now is, what I want to know and get from you is, what do you think of the daughter's reaction um, to her father and his return, and also of her mother's reaction to her husband coming back? How, when you read that, what sort of feelings are you beginning to, to have as a reader there? Yeah, I think I think you you're quite right. Definitely, she did not expect him to return. That was the last. Uh, yeah, like the fa facts talks as Eddie talking says, all about no blame involved. Um, Okay, um, oh, completely opposite. The mother reacts in a more disappointed way, but the daughter might not understand yet, yeah, I think so, and why he's actually returning. Um, 
Do you think uh, Penny's again quite a few of you just saying disappointed and upset? Um, but yeah, you can see the daughter questions the decision initially and thinks he may well be dead rather than living the life. Yeah, okay. Some good points be, being raised here, um, I think. Um, and I just wanted to sort of broaden it out again. Do we do we think is it just disappointment that the mother feels, or is it something more? potent, more powerful that she feels. OK, just waiting for the next couple of comments come through. I can see that John and Clem still typing away here. Yeah, embarrassment, John, yeah. Uh, and again, disappointment because he's not dying for his emperor, not going through with his final issue. Um, it's going to return to the shared screen. Oh, hang on. Um, Philippa, yeah, mother is embarrassed. Hugh, she might have thought that if he didn't die, then he didn't. Yeah, it's a good way of thinking it. Yeah, he didn't try hard enough. You know, you had one job, she might be saying to him when he comes back. One job, crash that plane into the ship. And what do you do? Nothing. Yeah, uh, is that idea as well. Um, I think as well, what we can think about here, I mean, you think about this, you know, he comes back and mother never spoke again in his presence. I don't know about you, but for me, I think that is, that's brutal. Um, it's, you know, her sense clearly. Honor. Shame overpowers everything um, that she feels. Uh, and you imagine she doesn't talk to him again for the rest of his life. And it, and it carries on. I'm just going to put it higher more. You know, nor did she meet his eyes. Uh, and the neighbours too, they treated him as though he no longer existed. John, what has been done to this man who has come back? He's chosen life over death. He's chosen his family over the fear of dishonour. And the way that he's treated... How is he made to feel within that community? That question to you, John. Um, he's now from that community. They're all going to think of him as a, as a coward, as someone who couldn't do yeah. what anyone else could do. Yeah. And most likely, because how often attacks were, for a kamikaze attack, someone else in that community has probably done the mission. And yeah. And they're going to yeah, or the, 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 the else who were on this, yeah, you say in the same mission wouldn't have come back. But that idea yeah. that, that he's been he's been treated as though he no longer exists. What do you, how do you react to that? It's powerful, but at the same time, that's kind of the culture. That's the that was the Japanese culture back then. If you weren't like putting yourself, if you weren't putting the emperor or Jap Japan first. And what were you doing? Yeah, yeah. Um, anybody else want to react to that, that that idea about being treated as as though he no longer exists? What? How do you react to that? What do you feel about that? He wasn't welcome back. You say, yeah, yes, you can say that again, but with spades, can't you, Hugh? That, that this is no no welcome. Um, the fact that he is deemed to no longer exist, what does that make him? Mm, it seems like he's kind of dead anyway. That's it, isn't it, Penny? Yeah. And again, it, it's, 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 it's already beginning to foreshadow that final line, isn't it? You know, wondering which might have been the better way to die. It, it's, it's, it's like a living death that he, he goes through coming back here, isn't it? He might have tried so hard trying to go back to his family, but he didn't uh, realise the consequences he'd get from actually coming back. Yeah, it's never crossed, isn't it? This is, the, this is the whole thing. It's never crossed his mind what the repercussions are going to be of coming back. He just thinks, no, 
I've got too much to live for. I've got my family. I've got my children. And, and he's thinking back to his father, his grandfather, that kind of heritage. He's thinking about life. He's thinking about everything that he's got positive. And he makes that conscious decision and he comes back and he never, never expects that he, this to happen, does he? And so we've got this of slow living death that he suffers. Uh, and in, in, oh, clearly he's ostracised by the community. So um, back to the chat, another little question for you. I mean, you know what these these are, um, the, all these, what connects all these poems? So if we think about what we've just been discussing here, what I want you to type now in your answers and in, in the chat, please, is what type of power do you think is being explored at this particular moment in the poem, where we focus on the reaction of his wife, of his neighbours, of his community, of his children? Power of emotion, yeah, I can go with that. Yeah, emotional power, yeah, thank you, Oliver. Yeah, yeah, I got that, Oliver. Yeah, don't worry. Oh, yeah, power of fear. Thank you, Clem. Yeah, I like that. Um, who's the fear coming from, Clem? The community or from um, the pilot that's returned? Both, really, because mm. like he's yeah. fearing death, but everyone else is fearing losing the whole thing in general. Yeah, good, 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 yeah. Any other thoughts on the power that's being explored here? Oh, hang on, a few more right and come up. Power, yes, Philippa, yeah, yeah, yes. The power of the community, yep, yeah, good. And yes, thank you, Penelope. Power of dishonour too, yeah, that works well, doesn't it? Good. So let's just go back. Uh, and power of duty, thank you, Hugh. Let's just go back um, to the shared screen again. So all of these things, yes. Uh, the power, whoops. If we put this into your colors, I think, because they're your ideas. Boom, that one, boom. Yeah, and the power of service, thank you, John, yeah. Um, we can we can think again about you know the the community expand that out a little bit to um, the, the the cultural heritage um, identity that goes with it. Um, and it's and it's that um, as well. That sort of philosophy of life that they're all leading as well. Um, that that's what. Um, it, it, we get a sense of power going through here uh, as well. Okay, um, so really good um, answers coming through there, showing your 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 own understanding and engagement with, with the um, the poem here. Um, now, if we go back, just go back to the beginning again of the poem, looking at a, a different bit. Um, so we got here about the father embarking at sunrise with a, with a flask of water, a samurai sword, and a cockpit. A, a shaven head full of powerful incantations. Now, if we look at the sort of opening here, um, what I'm looking at here with, with this sort of scent, whoops, this sense of incantations, um, what does that word remind you of? 
Uh, if I can ask that, please, to Philippa, incantations. Who else might use incantations, Philippa? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Um, if I said witches to you, what else could incantations mean? What does it mean? Well, if I if I were to say the word, if I were to say that witches might use incantations, what could you replace that word incantations with? Like spells. That's spells? it. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's it. Good. It's spells. That sort of idea. And so we're getting this idea here, isn't it? It's ritualistic. Uh, that ceremonial, as we talked about already. But they are it's like spells being cast. So almost like he doesn't have that self-control here, um, that he's been controlled by that kind of external force. And the external force, that samurai way of life, And also, that's a clear sense of honour um, that we're looking at as well. OK. Um, and again, you've got the kind of symbolism uh, I'm leaving at sunrise. Now, um, John, I'll come back to you because I'm thinking that you know all things Japanese. Um, what does Japan refer to as a country? An, an empire. Wait, say that again, sir. Um, so he leaves at sunrise, yeah? And if we think about the yeah. Japanese flag, um, which highlights this too. Um, yeah. Japan is known as the land of the what? Uh, the Wait. Uh, land of the rising sun. That's the one, yeah. And so we're getting that sort of symbolism um so and again we, we could have a sense of irony be contained here in this poem couldn't we because here he is uh leaving it at, at sunrise if we're thinking about sim the symbolism of life um with sunrise uh clem what would we think about life or death What would we think with sunrise, do you think? The, um, sunrise is more like living to have a new Yeah, that's day. it. So yeah, exactly. So th that's where we're getting that kind of sense of irony. Here he is leaving at the start of the day. You know, he'll never see another day dawn again. That That's the kind of theory behind this, if he's doing it correctly, if he's doing it properly. Um, and so here he is. Off at sunrise, off to his death. That that that's the intention, and so that's where we can begin to think about it as, um, yeah, what do we call it, um, being ironic here. And then we've got that, you know, enough fuel for the one we journey into history. And then there it is, halfway there. Quite literally, that is the point of what. If he's halfway through his journey, what is that? That is the point of. Oops. No return. That's it. Is that you, Hugh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That, that's where he's going to make that decision, isn't it? Um, if he carries on, that's it. He's, he's made his mind up. But if he turns back now, he's got enough fuel just to get back. Just to get back. Yeah. Um, and so that's where it begins to, and you can think about why the, all that sort of symbolism that would be, be in there, isn't it? It's that idea that if I carry on now, I'm on my way to certain death. There is no going back because either he crashes his plane into, into the target or he's going to run out of fuel anyway and going to crash. Because when he went off, they didn't have any things like parachutes in these planes either, all that sort of stuff. There was, there was no, in case, in, also in case you did make that kind of decision. Um, there's nothing there to save him, so that if he carries on his journey, it is going to be certain death. Okay? Right. On that cheery note, it seems like a good uh, place to pause in, in this poem for today, because um, you, obviously you've got a, 
toddle off for your next lesson now, before just before lunch. And um, what have we all got before lunch? Geography. Ooh, geography. Very good job. Everybody else has got nothing. They're not going to go because they've gone quiet. Right. Okay. So thank you for your uh, input today. That's really good. And some good ideas coming in through through the chat. Good that we're keeping on going with that. Um, and it's good to see you putting your ideas down there and, and, and getting involved and engaged that way, as well as your comments in the room. That's good. Um, so obviously, have a good weekend, one and all. And I will see you all again for week three on Monday. OK, so have a good weekend and see you Monday. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.